Okay, so as you can see, I've taken down that brim. Now I'm going to do the top part here. This is going to be like a, an off-white color. Like that. How does that look? That's looking pretty good. Get this bad boy back out. Number 12. Just follow that line. Flip it around. I use all this stuff to kind of set the sand on because you don't want to crush a nose or pop a nose off if you can help it. And having this to work against keeps that from happening. Nothing worse than doing all this detail. And then you turn them over and it's like, oh my God, what happened to his nose? The nose is gone, the whole carving's toast. So I'm just kind of taking this stuff out like this, working against that line that I just put in. This is like uh, carving butter. It's a nice, easy wood to learn with. Nice easy cuts, good sharp knives, you can do this all day. Let it snow, you know, who cares, I got a box full of cottonwood bark. So this is looking pretty good. Got to do something up here. This is where they just snapped it off. So how am I going to do that uh, that cap? I don't know. The first bit, this has got to go. It's all it's flaky stuff on the top right here. Let's see what we got after that. flaky stuff gone. Like that. Let's figure out where the top of that. I don't know, something like this. That'll work. Just going to take the V gouge, work that out. Watch your hands. I got a poke. See that? I got a little bit of a poke there on them. Generally, if you move this to where your hand's not in the way, you're not you're not going to poke yourself. I've got the camera sitting on the other side over there, which doesn't give me a lot of room. But I have to say, carving like this, I have never had, well, one time, and I've been carving f since 1998. One time I did uh, this little bad boy, met this finger right here. It wasn't too pretty, but... Um, Generally, the way that you carve here, I mean, that's that's not bad. And that only took, God, I don't even think I needed stitches on that. 
Thank God. All right. Another little stop cut. Round it goes, something like that. And let's take this gouge, just kind of work that down. Like that. Flip it around to clean it up. I think I'm running out of battery power here too. So I'm going a little faster. I Sometimes these knives will skip too, so you want to give them a, a wide berth, if you will. He's actually looking pretty good. Not bad. I'm going to take the edge off of that just a little bit. Just roll it around like that. Like that. Like that. Go a little deeper right there. A little deeper right there. I don't want to go too thin with this bass or uh, cottonwood bark because man, it it won't hold up if you do. So try not to get too thin. it was basswood there'd be no problem but not on this stuff all right he's looking good we're going to do a little bit of the take the edge off of that just bevel it hold it and just kind of roll it around as you're doing this like that All these little pieces in here, if you see stuff that needs cleaning up, easy enough to do. Well, folks, as luck would have it, I didn't have the microphone turned on, so I've got to do a voiceover on the latter part of the video, but no problem. The carving's actually coming along pretty good. And what I'd like to do is just clean up around the base of the beard in here and just kind of delineate where the beard ends and the wood begins. And then I'm going to paint the wood with a polyurethane there in the front. It's really going to jump out. But on the side here, what I'd like to do is make another stop cut. And I'm going to use the knife to do that. Just follow the lower portion of the beard. Like that. And then I'm going to take this flex cut half inch wide chisel and just clean out around the beard just a little bit to kind of show that contrast between the beard and in this case the cottonwood bark. You just want to get in there and just sort of clean it up a little bit. And as you're looking at the carving, just kind of flip it around in the light a little bit. And if you see parts that need to be cleaned up, you just take the flat chisel in this case and just kind of clean them up. And there's some portions around the brim of the cap that I want to clean up as well. And again, you just kind of look at it in the light and see what you'd like to clean up there as you go along. And in the front I've got this present and the present's going to have a ribbon that goes around it. And what I'd like to do is make that ribbon stand out just a little bit. So I've traced the ribbon in with pencil and I'm going to take, I could take either a V-gouge or a knife and just follow that tracing of the ribbon. And then I want to come in with the flat chisel on the sides just to make that ribbon stand out just a little bit. It'll make it a lot easier to carve. Same thing on this side. Just kind of come in on the, the flat side of it. Make it stand out just a little bit. And in the front I've got the word Santa. And what I want to do is use a V gouge and just trace out the letters of the word Santa. just like that. 
Well, I did that, folks, and actually I didn't like the way it turned out. Take a look at this. You can see where the S sort of chipped out a little bit, and I don't like that at all. Didn't quite turn out the way I like, so it's not a problem. I'm just going to take the three-quarter inch flat chisel, chisel it off, and we'll just start from scratch. And I'll trace it back in and go from there. Okay, so the carving's looking pretty good. I've got the base of it cleaned up, and I've got the new text in there that says Santa, and I'm going to use this very fine V-gouge to carefully carve out the word Santa. But before I do that, I want to use this sandpaper. I just want to show this to you. This is an aluminum ceramic sandpaper. It's a little bit more rigid than some of the other stuff that you find in the stores that just kind of turns to mush. This holds its crisp edges, allows you to get in there and clean up the beards. And I'll just go over the carving really lightly with this sandpaper. But to start working on the lettering, I'm going to use this V-gouge and carefully just follow what I've traced in for the letter S. And you want to go as careful as you can so that you don't chunk out any of the wood while you're doing the lettering. Just kind of follow it all the way around. Like that. Now to the A. So it's a technique where you're, you're very steady and you're pushing at the same time you're holding yourself back. So you know exactly where that chisel's going to go. Because if you're doing the lettering and it pops out at this point, you've got to start from scratch again. On to the N. Just kind of work slowly and methodically through them. Working on the last letter, the A. Like that. And then what I like to do is just kind of take the chisel, the gouge in this case, and just kind of hit the top points of the lettering just to make it stand out a little bit like this. Very carefully. You just want to work methodically because at this point, like I said, if it pops out and gouges out a big chunk of wood, you know, you've got to start from scratch. Same thing with the S. And that actually looks pretty good. Kind of form this S out a little bit more, just kind of go over it again. like that. Looks pretty good.